हेलो गुड मॉर्निंग स्टूडेंट्स हाउ आर यू होप यू विल बी वेल ओके सो टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू स्टार्ट द वेरी फर्स्ट चैप्टर ओके ऑफ द फोर्स यूनिट ऑफ क्लास इलेवेंथ फिजिक्स आई एम डॉक्टर आर के शर्मा योर फिजिक्स एजुकेटर और राइट सो द यूनिट इज वन दैट इज फर्स्ट यूनिट वी आर टेकिंग टूडे एंड इट इज फिजिकल वर्ल्ड एंड मेजरमेंट and the chapter name is physical world so it is lecture 1.1 all right so first of all the question arises what is physics what is physics you know whatever the actions motion i am doing is all physics all right whatever i am speaking or creating sound producing sound is all physics so and even the formation of rainbow the you know suppose i just release this pen so it is falling down so falling of an object under gravity all right so there are various phenomena which are very much related in study of physics so how to define term physics physics is basically the branch of science that deals with the study of nature and natural phenomenon all right so whatever is happening in the nature around us okay right suppose you know i am just doing this clapping so what is this i am just you know putting my hands this way with a certain force sound is being produced all right as i just uh, you know told you when i just release this it, is falling right so there are certain laws gravitation law the motion of the planets formation of rainbow the blue color of sky so there are many things uh, which we are observing in nature okay it's all in the you know physics so that is why the what is physics it is basically the branch of science that deals with the study of nature and the natural phenomenon now basically it has two major principle so there is a maximum thrust on two principles to study physics number one is unification what is the meaning of unification unification means basically to identify the laws in nature with the help of observation experimentation analysis you know etc to apply you know to apply them to explain the various phenomenon all right like the law of gravitation the motion of planet how the planets are revolving around the star that is sun how to explain the newton's law of motion and the law of electromagnetism so we say whenever there is a flow of current magnetic field is always there or whenever there is a change in magnetic field current to induces or current is produced so all such phenomena okay so this comes under the unification then the another thrust to study physics is basically reductionism means to derive some properties of the complex systems right from the properties and interaction of the simpler constituent parts meaning when we you know just have a you know a smaller particles or the small objects okay so how to just make them you know collective study how to you know combine them so study of that will be under the reductionism that is the temperature of gas in terms of kinetic energy of the molecules of the system so that is it is some about the molecular study okay all right now as per the ncert so this chapter is somewhat theoretical okay but we should know what is physics what are the major topics okay how it is you know very interesting and uh, we can feel excitement about so the next point is scope and uh, excitement of physics excitement means i want to know how the sound is being produced right how the rainbow is being formed like that okay so there are many queries coming into mind right 
so under the scope and excitement of the physics you know the physics will be basically classified into the two fields one is the macroscopic study and other is microscopic study under the macroscopic study you know okay of course basically this is what the study of phenomenon involving objects of finite size that is terrestrial astronomical means huge in size all right and the, we will study this macroscopic you know domain right in the classical physics so that is the classical physics is one of the branch of physics right and uh, what are the major uh, themes of the topics we study in the classical physics like mechanics thermodynamics optics etc now the second uh, major field is uh, the microscopic study so the microscopic domain will deal with the study of phenomenon involving the molecules atoms nucleus electrons or elementary particles so this study will be under the topic called modern physics quantum physics we may also call it as nuclear physics so this will be studied in class 12 all right so this way we have classified the physics into two categories classical physics meaning the study of the terrestrial or the astronomical objects or phenomenon with certain phenomenon and the second one is microscopic study means under the topic of modern physics or quantum physics okay which we will also call as nuclear physics clear so i think it is uh, becoming very you know very interesting now you know in the physics you find why it is so interesting why it is so you know uh, related you know in our day to day life so we will study under the topic physics technology and society all right so what is technology technology basically the application of the principles of physics right for practical purposes used in society ultimately whatever the laws or the phenomenon or the you know other activities taking place or the principles okay we will apply them okay to connect it with the society like the steam engine that is the construction or the design of the steam engine okay to run the trains you know in olden days right the radio tv mobile computer solar cells aircraft robot atom bomb all these are basically the discoveries under the study of physics and when we apply you know certain phenomenon principles do the lot of experimentation observations and all we generally you know create all these things which are very very useful for us in society so hence the topic physics technology and the society so with the help of technology using physics we will you know we are inventing or discovering certain things okay useful for society now i we can name you know some of the things like the the important ones okay since a childhood from very nursery class onward okay you are having you know certain mention right at different levels okay that who discovered what this and that okay so similarly the isaac newton you know he is basically known for the discovery of laws of motion and the law of gravitation he is from united kingdom now albert einstein the photoelectric effect and the theory of relativity he is from germany similarly the jc bose he created you know the ultra short radio waves he is from india so there are you know certain you know and there are number of scientists who discovered many many important things useful for society and of uh, from the different countries so there is a table you know given in the ncert book okay so if we name many of them okay it takes lot of time you know 
सो प्लीज रेफर द टेबल 1.1 एंड 1.2 ऑफ एनसीईआरटी जस्ट टू एनहांस योर नॉलेज अबाउट द नेम ऑफ द साइंटिस्ट देयर डिस्कवरीज और इन्वेंशंस एंड देयर कंट्री ऑफ ओरिजिन ओके फाइन okay so now the next uh, topic uh, we will take under consideration is the, the fundamental forces in nature so there are four fundamental forces in nature which governs the entire physics that is the classical as well as the nuclear physics or the macroscopic or the microscopic study of physics the first force in nature is gravitational force right so whenever we are having you know that are the two objects of certain masses m1 and m2 separated by certain distance r okay then there is always a force of attraction between the two according to newton's law and that says the newton's law states that or uh, newton's law of gravity states that the force of attraction between the two objects of certain masses m1 and m2 separated by distance r is directly proportional to the product of the masses and square of the distance between them the square of the distance between them that is r proportional to m1 m2 upon r square and you must remember whenever we replace this proportionality sign with the equal sign then there is always a constant of proportionality so here it is f is equal to capital g m1 m2 upon r square so capital g here is called universal constant of gravitation and because it is a constant so has a fixed value 6.67 into 10 to minus 11 newton meter square per kg square and you know this constant we studied you know we will be studying right in the next topic okay that is the dimensional analysis right topic and of course this force we will again study in the full fledged chapter called gravitation in our syllabus okay in the day so as of now this is gravity it is the weakest force in nature you know see there is a force so i am object you are also object okay so the all so are we attracting each other no do as per the law there is always a force of attraction so it is the weakest force in the nature now the next force is weak nuclear force these are basically the forces of interaction among the elementary particles like electron whenever you know some radioactive decay takes place okay so some elementary particles like a neutrino anti neutrino particles are being created for the short time right so the force of interaction among those elementary particles which are short lived okay or for a short life time are called weak nuclear forces so we have written the interaction between the electron and the anti neutrino what is anti neutrino it is the elementary particle right produced during the decay radioactive decay okay all right so that we will study in uh, further detail in class 12 in nuclear physics now the next uh, force is electromagnetic force all right that is whenever there are two charged particles okay q1 and q2 having certain masses uh, certain charges right and separated by certain distance r then according to coulomb you have, might have heard the scientist coulomb so according to coulomb's law there could be a possibility of force of attraction or a person why if the charges are same or similar nature that is positive positive or negative negative then there is a force of repulsion and if one is positive other is negative that is when charges are or opposite nature okay so then there will be force of attraction so this force can be the force of attraction or repulsion so according to coulomb's law it says that is the force of attraction or repulsion between the two charged particles separated at certain distance is directly proportional to the product of the charges 
and inversely proportional to the square of the distance between them. <coughs> Therefore, air proportion given Q upon R square and when we equate, so there is a constant of proportionality, it is 1 upon 4 pi epsilon 0 yeah epsilon naught it is a constant and rather the overall term is also placed as constant k as well so q1 q2 on r square so here this is uh, represented by k having value this and the numerical value is also there 9 into tensor 9 newton meter square per coulomb square this also we will study in detail in class 12th the very first unit called electrostatics as of now we should know what is this force now the next the fourth force is the strong nuclear force right you know in uh, chemistry also or in the you know previous classes as well <clears throat> and just now i shared you know that there is a force of attraction right between the charges of opposite nature that is positive and negative and force of repulsion among the charges of similar nature and as you know, whenever we talk about a nucleus in an atom, so inside the nucleus, you always say there are neutrons, okay, which are electrically neutral, there is no charge. There are protons, okay. So the protons and neutrons are situated inside the nucleus and the electrons revolve around the nucleus in different orbits. But don't you think, though the neutrons are electrically neutral but protons are positive positive so we may say that is they should have force of repulsion if they are experiencing force of repulsion then they should come out so what is that okay which is binding or holding these nuclear particles that are proton and neutron inside the nucleus okay something is holding them otherwise you may feel that is of course neutron is neutral okay but proton proton being positive may repel but they are not the you know nucleus is very much you know hold so the force which is actually holding these particles that is proton and neutrons are called you know a strong nuclear force they are the strongest force in nature all right and these particles which are inside the nucleus also termed as nucleons that is the protons and neutrons together are also called as nucleons so simple so this is basically nothing but the force which binds all the nucleons within the nucleus of an atom so there are forces between proton proton between neutron neutron okay and between neutron proton you may say sir the neutrons are not charged particle so please be clear that is this force is not at all related with the electrostatic force okay or the force due to the charged particle it is a the different type of force called a strong nuclear force clear <clears throat> so this is a somewhat important topic okay that is these are the force forces in nature which govern the entire physics and of course there is a possibility of a question in your examination on the relative study or comparative strength of these forces as we shared gravitational force is the weakest force in nature and the strong nuclear forces are the strongest so how to compare <coughs> so we can have the relative strength of the four forces now suppose we represent fg the symbol for gravitational force fw for weak nuclear force fe for electrostatic force and fs for strong nuclear force now if fg is taken as base value one then as compared to one the weak nuclear force is 10 raised to power 25 more stronger and compared to this the electric force will be 10 to power 36 times stronger than the gravitation and similarly strong nuclear force will be 10 to the power 38 times stronger as compared to gravitational force so yes there is a possibility of a question based on this so this i have given the relative so from this you can easily say sir by seeing this 
the gravitational force is the weakest, then little stronger is weak Newton force, then for the more stronger is the electrostatic force, and the strongest one is the strong nuclear force in nature. And even you can compare, okay, what is the relative strength between the two? That is weak nuclear force and this, okay? So you will see here tends to power 25, here tends to power 36. So difference will be how much? 11. That is, as compared to this weak nuclear force, electrostatic force will be 10 to the power 11 times stronger. Or this will be 10 to power 11 times weaker. Even similarly also between the two. So that is electrostatic force and the strong nuclear force when you compare okay so you will find test over 36 and 38 so this is test over 2 times mean 100 times stronger meaning thereby the strong nuclear force is 100 times stronger as compared to the electrostatic force all right all right now how to unify these uh, you know forces in nature so there are certain highlights, you know, <clears throat> in which the scientists use, okay, these uh, forces, okay, in practical way. So in uh, 1687, the Newton unified the terrestrial and celestial, you know, right, terrestrial and, you know, earthly bodies and the astronomical bodies, right, right, in mechanics, showing that same laws of motion, right, and the law of gravitation are applicable for both that is heavier objects as well as the smaller objects that is terrestrial as well as the astronomical objects right now the next in 1820 orsted and 1830 the faraday shows that electric and magnetic phenomena are inseparable very interesting in 12th we will study you know what is this See, whenever there is a flow of current, <clears throat> current always flow from higher potential to lower potential. That is whenever there is a certain change in the electric field, right? So when current flows, we will always see some production of the magnetic field around a current carrying conductor. Or otherwise, suppose there is a metallic conductor and if you change the magnetic field, either increase or decrease then some current is produced meaning thereby whenever there is a electric field you know or electric force okay so then there is a you know always a magnetic force so means whenever there is a change in magnetic field electric field is there electric field change means magnetic field there okay so means they are inseparable so it was you know studied by the Orsted and Faraday next Maxwell Magni, you know, uh, unified the electricity, magnetism, and optics. Optics means light. So whenever light, you know, propagates, okay. So you will see that is Maxwell, you know, show experimentally that is light is made of the electric field and the magnetic field. So he says that is the light is nothing but simply electromagnetic wave. All right. So, you know, uh, table is given in your NCRT book, okay, so you can refer the table 1.4 for, you know, some more, you know, uh, ideas. And now, the very last topic as per the NCRT in the very first chapter, that is physical world, is nature of physical laws. <clears throat> now, the physical laws are basically governed by the four law of conservation so there are some conservation laws okay which uh, we will be using in entire physics they are basically four that is law of conservation of energy you have studies in class 9th as well right or maybe in 10th as well that is what it says the total energy always remain conserved it can neither be created nor be destroyed but can only be transformed from one form into another like when i rub my hands okay i am doing mechanical work and some heat is being produced okay so whenever this object is here okay so above the earth okay so it has some potential energy but when i just drop it okay so it's a potential energy will convert to kinetic energy okay so when we switch on the 
electric button so electrical energy is there okay but when light uh, you know is on it means the electrical energy converts into light energy similarly when you switch on the fan the electrical energy converts to the mechanical energy or current energy of the fan etc so this is the law of conservation of energy similarly law of conservation of linear momentum what is momentum in ninth class we have studied that is momentum p was equal to m into v that is mass into velocity so whenever any particle okay of certain mass m moves with velocity v then it has momentum so the total momentum of an object okay right always remain conserved right if there is no external force acting on it that is on isolated system similarly the law of conservation of angular momentum so angular means basically the moment of linear momentum so total angular momentum of a body under rotation will also remain conserved or constant if no here is the linear momentum no external force and here we will say no external torque act on the system and the last one is law of conservation of charge so whenever we talk about our charge body okay or a system so we will again state it like this that is the total charge on an isolate system always remains conserved it can neither be nor destroyed but can only be transferred from one object to another so these were basically the four of conservation laws right law of energy linear momentum angular momentum and the charge so this way we have covered uh, all the topics uh, as per the ncert syllabus and uh, it was a bit theoretical chapter basically so but still is important to okay, being a part of syllabus so we must know all these topics sub topics you know and whatever the concepts uh, we have you know discussed okay so we must learn each and everything and out of these all topics you know though everything is important okay but this uh, you know the all these four forces are important there is a possibility of a question in your examination so kindly just learn this act with the relative strength so i hope uh, you enjoyed this uh, you know the chapter 1 that is physical world okay so in case of uh, any doubt you can you can clarify by you know contact me on mobile or you can just uh, send me your you know doubt on the mail so i think uh, this is all for today thank you thank you have a nice day